Hello. Today I'm going to show you how you can use explorations in Google Analytics 4 to compare purchasers and non-purchasers to very important uh, segments uh, of your users and see how those segments are interacting with your website so you can track down what is it that purchasers are doing differently on our website. This is going to be a free-flowing uh, video. Uh, it's not going to be uh, we're not creating a report uh, that you're going to look at every time. This is more to help you inspire you for how to use these tools, segments and explorations to see what's going on with your website uh, and see how you can use Google Analytics data uh, to really find out and improve things about your website. Um, this is what we call what we call at slide rule analytics we really call this analysis uh, what we're doing is analysis we're playing with the data we're asking questions it's very different from reporting where you might use a tool like data studio or you might use google analytics for itself um, where you create one report that you're going to look at every week just because there are things that you have to know like what was our average order value last week or something like that um, so this is very much an exploration it's going to be a little bit free-flowing but i hope you find it helpful um, good okay so let's jump in the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the segments so we're going to create a purchaser segment and a non-purchaser segment this is important enough that Google Analytics 4 has actually pre-built these for you. Um, so you're going to go ahead and create the purchaser segment here. Um, so you click, you go into the explorations, you click segments, click the plus sign next to segments, and you can select the pre-built purchasers one. Now, let's talk about what this segment is. You can see here, this is users, not sessions. This is users. Uh, that have made a purchase. That's the concept here. Now, this is demo data. This is a demo website, so there's not a lot of interesting data uh, that we're going to see here, uh, but we're going to go over the concepts anyway. Now, you'll also see here that it says purchasers are users. Uh, purchasers are users that have uh, completed an in app purchase, a purchase, or an e commerce purchase. For e commerce stores, this is all the same thing. There are no in app purchasers, and purchases and e commerce purchases are exactly the same thing. But you can leave this as is. There's no reason to change it. Uh, there's no problem here. Now, one trick I really want you uh, to do uh, as soon as you see this video, as soon as you get to this point in the video, is you're also going to want to build an audience for these. The reason why we want to do that as soon as possible is that audience is unlike segments which we're going to use in this video audiences are not retroactive that means that when I create the audience it only exists from that day forward segments you can see here are retroactive it's telling me hey you're creating this segment and in the past month uh, you've had three people who fit in this segment of purchasers audiences only from the day I create it forward. Now, there is a built-in audience that Google Analytics 4 has by default for purchasers, but it uses a membership duration of 30 days. So that's going to be purchasers for the past 30 days. Uh, what I want you to do is set this to the maximum limit. The maximum limit is 540 days, 18 months, right? And come up here and rename this purchasers max limit. You're still going to have the built-in purchasers, uh, but this will create an audience for the maximum duration. It's good to have both, uh, but the maximum duration you know, is gonna be important as well. Okay, cool. So if I create that, I click that button, I click save and apply, it lets me create the audience right here as I create the segment. And the good thing about this is I can use the explorations to anticipate what is going to be in my audience after a few weeks or months worth of data has been collected. All right, let's do the same thing for non-purchasers. So I'm gonna click the plus button again. I go non-purchasers. Again, this is gonna be users that didn't make a purchase. That's effectively what this means. Again, I'm going to want to build an audience and I'm gonna do it for the maximum duration again, All right? All right, cool. And then I'm gonna do this, max duration. It's telling me that I've already created one because I've already created it. Uh, I've already created a non-purchasers um, uh, audience. Um, there is not a non-purchasers audience created by default in Google Analytics. So just be prepared for that, right? And then I click save and apply. Cool, and now I've got this. Uh, good, so now I've got my two segments and let's jump in let's see how we might be able to use some of these segments well before we do that let's just show where you can see the audiences so if you go to admin 
and you go to audiences, you'll see that the audiences that I just created will load here. Right? And you can see that I created that non-purchasers one earlier today. That's not there by default. This is the purchasers one that is there by default in Google Analytics 4. And then I just created a purchasers max limit here uh, and a non-purchasers max duration. Should have named them the same thing, but you get the idea right here. Uh, you can only edit these you can edit the name. That's all you can do. So I could fix this, right? I could say, hey, you know, I meant this to be max limit, but I can't actually change anything else about this. So uh, be ready, right? Uh, be careful. I can archive these like that. Um, that's really all I can do. Uh, you can archive the original one too if you want. All right, good. So that's audiences. Uh, what audiences will let me do is after these have started to collect data, you can see here, like I said, not retroactive. So it's saying there aren't any users in this. That's because I created this today. So we're gonna have to come back in a few months and create another video uh, showing you how to use audiences. It's unfortunate, but it's the way Google Analytics 4 has decided to do this. So, um, <clears throat> Audiences are different than segments, um, but they work very functionally, very similarly. Um, audiences you can use in the built-in reporting, um, but we're gonna go back to explorations and we're gonna look at segments. Okay, good. Let's go back to segments, right? I've got my purchasers here, my purchasers and my non-purchaser segments. Let's import some dimensions and metrics that might be interesting. Let's start with uh, the dimensions that might be interesting. Here are landing pages. Let's talk about uh, page, uh, let's talk about page location. That might be interesting. And probably uh, for most of us, source medium is gonna be another interesting one. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use the session source medium, but you could also take a look. It's different. The first user source medium also might be interesting to look at. All right, what metrics are we interested in? Um, there's things like views, sessions, pretty standard stuff. Views, views per session, views per user. Those are gonna be, end up being pretty interesting. I'll show those to you in a second. Um, we're gonna want total users, right? And we're going to want, uh, let's see, what, what else What we might we want here? Uh, oh, uh, did I get sessions? We want sessions. Cool, let's get that as well. And sessions per user, let's do that. Import, all right, good. Okay, so like I said, this is gonna be kind of a free-flowing exploration now. Unfortunately, this is demo data, so you know uh, your data is going to look very different uh, because this is a demo site. But let's talk about some of the interesting things I could do with this comparison. So right off the bat, I think something that might be interesting just to get a baseline is how many total users are we talking about, right? We've got these different segments for different users. What are the total users over the date range here? Uh, 126 people didn't make a purchase three people did make a purchase, right? Uh, your numbers, hopefully, very different, right? <laughs> Again, demo site, right? Okay, cool. And so that just sets the baseline. That gives me a baseline. What am I looking at in these two segments? I got it, all right, cool. Let's look at, now that we've got that, let's take a look at, hey, what about views? How many page views total, right? This is total page views, you know, probably not super interesting right? What might be more interesting is views per session. Is there a trend there? Do purchasers have look at more pages? Now, of course, right, uh, in real data, uh, you know, in, 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 in your data, as well as everybody else's, is, purchasers are going to be looking at more pages because they have to view checkout pages, they have to view carts, they have to view purchase pages and stuff like that. But what is the big difference? Is there an intent that we could draw from there? Is there something that we could do for retargeting? Hey, uh, you know, non-purchasers that have looked at four page views might be much more likely to convert than non-purchasers that looked at one page view. Seems intuitive. Uh, the data here kind of supports that. We can see non-purchasers, you know, they're gonna look at, in this case, two pages, right? Uh, in yours, it's probably gonna be closer to one, right? Uh, whereas purchasers, uh, you know, are gonna look at five pages. Yours might be 10. You know, purchasers might be doing a lot of research. Do you have a product that purchasers are going to do a lot of research on, right? How many, uh, how many sessions per user do we have, right? That might be interesting. Let's see if we can get that metric in here, right? Um, cool, so let's get rid of, let me do that, I don't know, all right? Um, 
let's look uh, let's look at let's break this down let's look at that views let's look at the views where uh, let's look at the views where um, what what pages are purchasers and non-purchasers looking at? There might be some obvious ones, but there might be some non-obvious differences. There's nothing obvious here, right? Again, mostly because it's demo data. But you might see something interesting in your data. You might see something uh, different. You might see something that shows, oh, you know, here's here's a purchase. I did this analysis just recently for a client, and they had one page that purchasers were really looking at. There's this collection pages that this collections page that purchasers were just like way off the charts looking at compared to non-purchasers, which brings up the point here. It's the comparison. Of course, the absolute numbers, there's more non-purchasers than purchasers for views, but it's the comparison that's interesting. It's the relative amounts, right? Um, that's, that's what we're looking for in this kind of an analysis. Okay, cool. Um, that does page location. What might be more interesting than page location is actually landing page. Now, unfortunately, Google Analytics 4 has not fixed this long-standing bug where you can't look at the landing pages in an exploration without the query. So if you do Facebook ads and stuff like this, this is unfortunately going to be limited to you at now, for now, until they add a dimension for just looking at the landing page. It's the most obvious thing in the world. Uh, they need to do it. I'm sure they will at some point. Um, but still, take a quick peek, look at it, see if there's anything interesting here. Uh, we're looking at landing pages and we're looking again for differences between these two. Now with dummy data like this, uh, this is mostly me testing purchases on my website, so this isn't very interesting. For you, there's probably something interesting here. There's probably purchasers are landing on a specific page. This can give you an idea of which landing pages are most effective, right? And what you can do to replicate those landing pages for other advertisements, for other products, things like that, right? Good. Okay, cool. Uh, let's get rid of that. <clears throat> and let's switch gears over from uh, page views and this sort of stuff to uh, sessions and where users are coming from. <clears throat> so again, what we're looking for is a big difference between purchasers and non-purchasers. So you might see here, like Rakuten has a lot of purchasers, right? Half of, or a significant portion of my purchasers, in this case, if this were real data, uh, would, I would say, ooh, Rakuten, very effective compared to non-purchasers, right? Uh, that's interesting. That's the kind of stuff that you're looking for here. Now, a couple of things on that. Um, this is going to depend on your product. Do you have a product that is inclined to uh, impulse purchasers? Uh, or are you selling something you know huge like gym equipment, home gym equipment, right? That's gonna take a long time for people to make purchasers. You might see differences here that are due to uh, the inability of us to track people cross domains. Um, so that means when someone, someone might be looking at your Instagram ads on their phone, if it's a long, if it's a long research, if it's a big purchase, people are going to go back to their desktops to make purchases. Um, you know, just be careful for that when you're looking at this analysis, but still it can give you an idea, the clues on that. How much am I doing with that? How much of my, uh, direct traffic is actually cross domain traffic. You can get that idea here with some of this, right? With some of this analysis. Okay, cool. Uh, one quick note on the landing pages. Again, you can see here, uh, there's this problem that I mentioned with landing pages specifically that the explorations have the landing page plus the query string. That is a great example of why we created audiences for these segments here, because we don't have that limitation in the reporting. So once I have audiences available here, I can go to engagement and landing pages, and you can see that these landing pages here don't in fact have the, uh, have the, this is the home page, by the way, right? But this home page doesn't have all the query string stuff that we saw in the exploration. So that's why you need to create the audiences. So to sum up, uh, this segment, uh, exploration is a great way to look at your data, start, analyzing it, 
playing with it, see if there's any insights that you can come up with that might be useful, um, really help you generate ideas about what to do. We get this question all the time with Google Analytics 4. We get it set up, it's tracking good data, great. What do I do with it, right? Um, you know, looking at revenue in Google Analytics 4, I mean, you can go and look at Shopify for Google Analytics 4, right? For, for you can look at Shopify for revenue data. You don't need Google Analytics 4 for that, right? But here's something that you can do with Google Analytics 4 in the default reporting phase. You don't need to build out anything special for this. You can just get in there and you can start playing your, with your data and probably derive some insights you know, within the first 10 or 15 minutes. So I hope you find this useful. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're having trouble getting accurate data in Google Analytics 4, check out our app, our Shopify app. Uh, it's uh, called Slide Rule Analytics, uh, Google Analytics 4. If you look for it in the Shopify store, you'll see it there. Um, and great, uh, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.